What if we could see what other people see? What would it be like to truly experience ourselves as those who interact with us every day? How would our perspective change? I believe that this could change our future. As a mediator, I sit between people who are struggling to figure out what has happened and how to move forward. It is fascinating work as I hear first-hand accounts, stories of relationships gone bad, stories of conflict and tension. The best part about being a mediator is that it is one of the rare professions where you get to hear all sides. I find myself being drawn into their stories, being touched by their pain, struck by their goodness. They tell me about their great efforts and good intentions, and go into great detail about the other person's bad behavior and motivations. They are often very articulate about what the other person needs to do differently, and they are always partly right but they are surprisingly unaware of how they have contributed to the situation, what they could do differently. Most of my work is helping people see what other people see, what is getting in the way of working well with each other, being great leaders and partners, and achieving their dreams. A number of years ago, I was working with a struggling team. Actually, they were struggling with their manager, Leslie. One of the team members, Chris, decided to share some of the team's grievances with Leslie. Early in the meeting, in the first meeting, Chris asked Leslie to stop sharing her concerns about individual team members with other members of the team. Chris was not even finished explaining what she meant when Leslie exploded, saying, you are lying, why are you lying in front of these people? Referring to my colleague and me. While clients rarely explode, they do share a number of things in common. Leslie knew she had things to learn as a manager. She knew she wasn't perfect. Leslie just didn't believe that she was sharing negative information about team members with their colleagues. She didn't see it. I asked Leslie, if this was true about you, if you were actually doing this, what would it mean about you? Leslie instantly shot back saying, it would mean I'm a horrible human being that is wrong and I would never do it. It was an unbearable idea, an idea that made her unacceptable to herself. Somehow this behavior and conversation triggered in Leslie her own question, am I a good person? And because of this, Leslie was unable to hear her team's critique a critique that was actually a relatively easy fix. Here's the thing. If Leslie had been able to see what the team members saw, she would have changed instantly. However, instead of being reflective and curious, her own internal dialogue made it impossible for her to hear some very helpful information. Information that would have brought her one step closer to being the kind of manager she dreamt of being. We have all had a taste of this. We hear our recorded voices and we're surprised. We take selfies and exclaim, is that what I really look like? And the answer is yes. That is what you sound and look like to the rest of us. So why is it so difficult to believe that our behavior also looks different from the other side of our eyeballs? I long for the day when a client says to me, I don't collaborate enough. 
I don't listen. I'm overly critical. They find me intimidating. That is really surprising because I want to collaborate, listen well, give balanced feedback, be approachable. In fact, I thought I was. So what am I saying and doing that is creating this experience for them? Help me see what they see. And yet for some of us, one critique can rattle our entire being. We allow it to go to the core of our identity, to attack us, and fundamentally question our goodness, our worthiness, our competence, our unbearable idea. And because of that connection, we have no choice but to eliminate it from our consciousness. The problem is that our efforts to deny it do not eliminate it for others. In fact, the more we argue that they are wrong, the more foolish and at times even evil we are perceived. So how many of you have been thinking about what negative things your friends, family, and colleagues are noticing about you? Or are you thinking about your friends, family, and colleagues who just don't get it? As I was preparing for today, I asked some friends, how would you change if you saw yourself as others saw you? The response was often visceral and negative. Ouch! That would be painful. That would be my version of hell. I'd have no friends. And yet here is the reality. All of these people are wonderful. People I choose to hang out with. People who have made my life and the lives of many others better. Part of the reason for their responses is that many of us are not attentive to our many positive aspects, and we struggle to name those things that people like about us, the things that have been written in our evaluations, repeated at our farewells, and will, again, be spoken at our funerals. We must be grounded in our greatness to be able to accept critique. Have you noticed the irony? I will not acknowledge my greatness. I am overly self-critical from the many lies I have accumulated along life's journey. But if you dare criticize me, I will defend myself because it is so important to me that you see me as competent, worthy, good, even though I don't believe it myself. Doesn't that seem weird? So how do we close the gap between the way we see ourselves and the way others see us? Here is the reality. We cannot be fully aware of ourselves without getting information from others. That includes the good and the bad and the moments of ugliness. Actually, the moments of ugliness I generally recognize. But again, my need to defend my good name too often results in blaming others for my bad choices. So what do we do about this? Here is one way to capture the complexity. Take a strip of paper, and on one side write all the things that people have appreciated about you. This hopefully will take you a long time. 
All right, again, so take a strip of paper and on one side write all the things that people appreciate about you. If you struggle with this, folks, look at your old evaluations. Look at the reference letters that people have written about you. And also the personality profiles you've filled out. Also ask the opinions of people who choose to hang out with you and the people who enjoy working with and for you. Do not stop until this side is full. It is foundational. Then turn the paper around and this side will have two parts. The one part is the good side of me, that if I do it too much, it can be at best annoying and at worst cause me difficulties. For example, I am often known for being focused, getting things done, thinking quickly. These are things already on the good side, and they have worked for me. Unfortunately, when I am stressed and squeezed for time, this great part of me is not so great and is experienced by others as being impatient, talking too much, cutting people off. We definitely need a video camera following us on one of these days. It would be enlightening. The second part of this are the things that you are just not good at. For example, I am slightly dyslexic and I rarely read books as a kid. Because of that, I do not write or, for that matter, read well. I also am known for struggling with prioritizing my time and I'm often so focused on getting things done that I'm not always attentive to the needs of those around me, especially my family and friends. When you have completed these two sides, turn one end 180 degrees, or half a turn, and connect the two ends. You have just created a Mobius strip. And as you follow the line on the Mobius strip, you will notice there is no beginning or end, just one continuous line running through all sides of the paper. You are all of the aspects of the strip, and they are all parts of your story. Many of us live in an either-or world where we exaggerate one side and minimize the other. This distortion leads to personal blind spots, things that we do not see but others can see clearly. Yes, we can be our worst enemy. The only way that we can fill our Mobius strip is if I, you, we hear and embrace what we are good at and the things that we do that causes problems for others and the only way our friends, family, and colleagues can know themselves is if we tell them what we appreciate about them and then with clarity and kindness what they do that causes us problems. This is harder than most of us realize. A number uh, of weeks ago, I was working with a client. I was coaching a client um, who was struggling with a colleague. Specifically, the colleague was doing a number of behaviors that were getting, that was, was really annoying him and getting in the way of, of moving work forward. As I talked and encouraged the uh, 
person to talk to his colleague, he said to me, I would rather quit my job before I had that conversation. We often lack courage. We often provide critique poorly, waiting for our frustration to boil over. And we often have not laid down a foundation of affirmation. It is in open and honest relationships where we can let go of the lies and see clearly. In doing so, we can release what is holding us back and unleash what is possible to achieve our dreams. And if we could convince others to join us, who knows how our future could change? If you could see what I see, and that includes the good and the not so good, you could achieve your dreams. Thank you.